Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. Thank you to everybody tuning in once again to the weekly podcast and thank you to everybody that packed out Scotland on what I can only describe as a biblical evening. Monsoon. Monsoon. Deluge. All the other synonyms that are available in the dictionary for Glaswegian rain. Um, on Friday night against the Scarlets here at Scotland on Plaster It Purple Night. Murphy, apart from everybody going home looking like drowned rats, <laughs> how great was it to see everybody pack out and support Glasgow Children's Hospital charity on, on Friday night. Yeah, it was an amazing night. To start off with, it was an amazing <laughs> night. Um, even during the warm-up, it was great. I, I mean, like the pre-match activities, you obviously had the activities on the back pitch as well, and you saw everybody walking about with their, plus, uh, their purple flags. Um, everybody had a wee purple top on as well, so yeah, it was pretty cool. We touched on it last week, obviously, for our, um, our episode with, with Cole, um, the, the generally just the, the fantastic work that the guys at the charity do and i think at, at time of recording we're currently sitting at about seventeen thousand six hundred. yeah i was gonna say we smashed the we are well the target on the yeah we target of fifteen thousand pounds and we, yeah. we've sailed through that so yeah, thank it's amazing. you on thank you warrior nation yeah thank you guys it's also quite cool seeing the boys rock up with the uh, purple socks they look good don't they yeah purple yeah. socks purple head tape that was pretty yeah. cool that was a i think that was a player i believe i want to, I want to give kyle credit for that yeah one. Steno, Steno, i want to give Steno credit he's for always that one. uh very good leader for all things charitable, but especially Plastic Purple, that seems to be quite a close thing for him. Um, does a lot of the trips there, and uh, yeah, we'll raise some good money. We also had Ewan Allison as our, our mascot on on Friday night. Uh, raised over £160,000 over the last year or two as well, so a massive heads up yeah. to him. Um, and one other man who stood out on the night was uh, our player of the match, Mr. Xander Fagerson. Yeah, he was good, wasn't he? He, he was. was. It's a match... It was probably a match for a tight head. Yeah. 32 scrums. That's ov- not full scrums. There's some resets, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 32 scrums in total. Got through a shift in defence and uh, put in some pretty good carries as well. So very envious of him. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good shift from Xander. And we oh, rewind exactly. a little bit to the, the pre-match activations on the, the back page. One man thoroughly involved in that, as you'll have seen on our <laughs> social media. Today's guest, Big Al, Alex Love Samuel. Him. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I got stitched up on. Uh, <laughs> on the I wouldn't say stitched up. You loved it. Yeah, what was it? The I BK. Did it, to be fair, but yeah. the BKT passing challenge. Yeah. Well, you you passed it. Talk to me. Facundo decided to just show everybody up and volley the thing through one of the tires at one point. Yeah, he kicked it. Uh, Maxi did an American football or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. I thought it was just going to go to my email, but then uh, Molly. Media woman uh, find her email <laughs> in, and now it's on the URC. So, so we should also touch on the fact that it's not just on the on the back pitches of Scotland. You were involved at the weekend. You were out in Muir with the, the A squad. Is it Megatland? Great win for the team out there. How how was that for yourself outside? Yeah, it was really good. It was uh, definitely a lot better than the week before. We we improved a lot, and uh, yeah, all came for a good week's training. And yeah, it was really enjoyable. Really good day out, and uh, all the boys had fun. I think so. Would you go in with that as well, Mark? Yes, it was a brilliant game. I think, obviously, Horney worked so hard for us the previous week against Air and wanted to make sure everything was perfect and we were going to score lots of tries and obviously it didn't happen. <laughs> so we kind of drew him a bit of a taste of about four or five tries. And How many did we end up getting? Eight. Eight or something, yep. yeah. So no, it was a good day at the office and uh, we kind of, I wouldn't, put it as far to say we play a bit of a barbarian style but we do like to chuck the ball about and not just batter into each other um, and we do like running it from deep um, kind of emulating what we do here yeah. but with a bit more flair if we can um, so it was actually we were myself and Gregor Brown were chatting about it it's actually quite tough because <laughs> usually here if you get the ball on 22 you'll get a, somebody in the backfield just get it bang it long into touch you go to line it you got to run all the way back and get ready to play it from deep. So the GPS report often looks a bit bigger than usual. So we're always knackered at the end of the game. But other than that, it was a, it was a good game. And Big L had a couple of lane breaks in there. Yeah. Talk, go on. Talk to me about it. <laughs> Don't be humble. That second. Uh, Stole one off me as well. <laughs> Snake. Yeah. First one of the game. Yeah, yeah was, first uh, one of the game. No, at second, I was definitely blown as well, though. It was It was a tough game. Especially that first half was so fast, and I think uh, yeah, a couple, I think most of us had a line break to be fair in that first half. Yeah, and obviously there's the 
game this weekend against Stirling. There is indeed. Part of a two-game weekend for us. We've got the, the game up at Bridgehall, so preview that one for us, if you will. Well, Glasgow Warriors A versus the Stirling Wolves, as they're now known. Indeed. So uh, it's going to be exciting Friday night lights. Indeed. Always is at Stirling. It's might be a good good night according to the weather, but... We have to learn now we that we can't trust the forecast can't anymore. Trust, can't trust any app we have on our phones or anything. Um, but as it stands, it's going to be a brilliant sunny evening at Stirling, so get yourself down there. Indeed. And then the main event on the Saturday, <laughs> over to you. Saturday night here at Scotston. Uh, Glasgow is against Connacht in the final match of the BKT URC regular season. Tickets are still available at glasgowarriors.org. What so, time is it? 7.35pm kickoff. Thanks for asking, Murphy. You definitely didn't know that off the top of your head, did you? Re- are you reading that? I did, well, <laughs> our, our setup today implies that I've got our, uh, our recording laptop, my, my work laptop, on my lap as a laptop. Implies um, I can confirm I'm not Googling it. You're, you're, okay. I would say you're more than welcome to come down. No, no, sure I believe you. I'll trust you. I'll trust you. Anyway, anyway, before this descends into further madness, let's get on with the, the rest of the Squadcast. Right, for those of you who are new listeners to the Squadcast and haven't tuned in over the last 23 episodes, we're not going to take it personally. Uh, in front of Alex there, we've got the, the Squadcast hat filled with various scenarios relating to your Glasgow Warriors teammates. Your job, Alex, is to pick them out, read out the question slash scenario on the card, and generally just make sure everybody has a good time listening to it. So, dive in. Good luck. Perfect. Best nickname in the squad, where did it come from? So, uh, I don't know. First have of all, you, have you got a nickname? Yeah, it's, it's probably <laughs> I was going to ask you for a lit to say his name. probably not PC <laughs> for, the, for the viewers, so we'll leave it there. Big Al. Big Al. Big Al Mark II, Big since Al. you've yeah, got another yeah, one. Big L2. I get that sometimes, but... Or he gets knees and elbows. All right. Exactly. Sammy J loves calling him knees yeah. and elbows. <laughs> Why is that? Because he's all knees and elbows. <laughs> yeah, all bone, man. <laughs> there was, um, I think it was actually training yesterday. Uh, Big Al carries off of a black or something, or carries off a 10, and Sammy says, just goes, knees and elbows! <laughs> just getting ready, because you know... Because well, uh, you know something's going to hit you. It's either going to be a knee to the face or an elbow to the face. So you just got to prepare yourself for yeah. a big L running down your channel. So At least you're prepared for it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, back, uh, back to the question at hand. <laughs> best nickname. I don't know. Well, Tom BV's got a good one. Tom Baravala? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, to roll, but also... Dubly. Yeah, now he's Dubly, yeah, because All right. he took a double massage slot last week. So now he's two roll, two <laughs> massage slots. And then, when you're in the academy, you don't really take a massage slot. Yeah. He's, and his third one. His third one. Both the hammies. Oh, yeah. He's had two no. bad hammy on each one, so he gets called Dubly now. He doesn't have much slot, <laughs> this Tom, does he? He's usually, he's usually the, the aim of this particular uh, question. Yeah, we'll have to get him on. In, we will have to get him on at some point to defend yeah. himself he's slash justify king, his he's actions. He's the king of the RTP, he's a poor boy. Yeah, nah. I've actually talked to him quite a bit about that, because uh, I know it's pretty rubbish when you spend yeah. uh, a whole year. I think yeah. at the start, you're supposed to get back in, in January. You had, you had a loyal membership to the RTP yeah, group, did, didn't you? for a long time. And I'm, well, D- touch wood, I've shaken it for at least a bit now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have like different tiers of membership to to RTV? Like, well, he's got you, he's got the platinum gold. Standard. Say, you, you had a couple of back to back ones, if yeah. I remember correctly. You had a pretty lengthy spell. Do you, do you like trade war stories for one of a bit? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. You could say that some boys <laughs> pass on some of the some of the battle stories. Um, Al's got good ones just because he's he was spent so long. <laughs> Gregor Brown's another one, um, but yeah, Tom. Poor boy, he's gonna come out with the worst battle scars than anybody else because he's he's a long serving member. Oh, um, yeah, he's got loyalty cards, he's got everything, he's got the t shirt, he's yeah. been in there the longest. So, should give a shout out at this point to the SNC and the, the physio team because they do, yeah, power, they're not yeah. work on you guys, <laughs> making it sound yeah. as if they're terrible and they're <laughs> not getting them back, but no, no they're, they're the exact opposite, job. they do a great job, they, they are very, very good. Um, so very glad that you're in their hands and not mine. Yes, yes, agreed. Um, I'll put you on social media. I'm all happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Next anyway, one, Alex. dive in, Alex. Best roommate, worst roommate. All right. Uh, so who who is your roommate normally? Do you have a set roommate? Or? Uh, I've been with Lewis Bean quite a few times. Okay. He's a uh, he's a good roommate actually. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Obviously, he's got he's been in uh he was in the army before he was here and how old is he now? He's just like thirty. Going on thirty-one, I think he's uh, 
he's got a lot of good stories for you in the room, and he's always good. He'll bring you back a, a sandwich, and uh, I don't know. That. Very he's, accommodating, he's nice. is he? Very accommodating, yeah. yeah. So he so I'd go. I'll go for him for best roommate, worst roommate. Were you in South Africa? I was in South Africa, yeah. Who did you? I'll go with Dolby because he gave me the, the buck. <laughs> so, two days. What was it? Dolby had it on maybe the Saturday, the Saturday night. Just yeah. And then Tuesday, like Monday night, that night, I just woke up middle of the night and I was like, oh, that was Dolby. That's got it? to be, there's only one way to describe that trip and that was just a banter trip. <laughs> just like one of those trips. It, it is much that we look back wrong. on and that was the season. Like, yeah, it feels mental. like actually you've actually just remembered because we don't think we've ever actually covered this off in, in sort of a public forum. But obviously we we had the shark game the week before, and then the Lions game was the, the second game of the while. That that was supposed to be your pro debut. You, you were named in the internal team announcement. You were named in the twenty three, and then the game obviously gets called off the day before the game. What what's going through your head at that point? Because obviously you set yourself up to be your make your first your first appearance. We did captains run the whole lot. Right? Yeah, you did, you did, you've done, you've done yeah, all the things during the week. One, and then... Probably one day away from it. Yeah, well, it was, it was the day before yeah, the game. Yeah, the day before. So, so yeah. yeah, what what's going through your head at that point? one, because I was, yeah, I was so ready for, for that game, but obviously I was lucky I got it the week after. Obviously yeah. at the time I didn't know, I, I was just planning as I was going to play that Super 6 final, I think. Mm-hmm. It was the week after. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I was like, the world's against me, eh? But, <laughs> you know, see, I, yeah. A week I, later, I, I got my debut, and it was it was yeah. uh, it was good actually to get it at Scottsdale in, yeah. in front of the fans. You had a good you had a good run out for that one as well. So I thought thirty seven nil against Benetton. So every cloud, eh? Every cloud. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you go from the sort of the world against you. What what was the other end of the spectrum when you finally made it onto the pitch? On I mean, you started the game. I say finally made it onto the pitch, yeah. but when you ran out of the tunnel for for your debut. Yeah, no, it was it was awesome. I mean, I was I've never actually been so nervous for a game I don't know I don't usually get that nervous but uh, before the warm up I was like just suddenly nerves kicked in I was like oh geez this is uh, <laughs> something I hadn't experienced before but no, it was awesome definitely yeah. the, I went out after with my family and stuff and yeah it was, it was a properly probably good day a good day for you as well yeah it was a fun day because I was playing rugby um, <laughs> <laughs> but no it was good it was good because obviously going from such a big Big low to such a big high was obviously very good and obviously took your debut well. But yeah, thank God we can leave that trip in the past. <laughs> very much so. Ross and myself just ended up being waiters for everybody else because folk obviously weren't allowed at the room. We were just running trips with bread and soup up to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever need a sandwich, or if it's your <laughs> man. soup and a sandwich, Roscoe and I be there. <laughs> Look at you're tapping along to this now. Loyal well, listener, what do you expect? Compare a teammate to a film character. Fair enough. Right. I mean, I would say you've you've got a fifty odd teammates to choose from. You've got pretty much an infinite library of films to choose from. Yeah. So, I I'll do one just because I'm looking straight at him. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking oh. about somebody in the background. <laughs> See, that's easy. Seba, Roadrunner. Nice, nice. <laughs> I like where you're at with that. And that is easy. Just yeah, boys, rapid. Pretty handy. Pretty rapid. Uh, compare maybe Tooney to like, well, Christian Tintin Christian, yeah. to like Tintin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, you, you've come through the ranks with, with Christian, obviously, yeah, playing for the A squad as well. You, you must know each other pretty pretty well went by now, I say. Yeah, I have uh, I probably first met him at 16, so <laughs> did all the age groups through together and then, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to make some Tintin just... Just kind of reminds me of my <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I'm just looking around because I realised he walked through a minute. Is he still here? I thought you were <laughs> looking at him and you were going to say 10 No. <laughs> um, Richie Gray, James Bond. Just he's got that suave. He'd be the tallest James Bond in history. He would be. He wouldn't be the most... Yeah. What's the word? Like nimble and like... I don't know. I'd back him. I don't know. No, it's six foot... 11 you know, you know the scenes where he's like running across the roof and he has to jump and grab onto a helicopter I mean you yeah. wouldn't have to do that you could just run up and grab <laughs> right here's a good one this is this was je- like a genuine thing when he arrived JP is Jaws I did see <laughs> this somebody on somebody on social media did put looks that one up looks like Jaws so look, look we've got okay. Suave as James Bond and then we've got JP as Jaws there you go we've got the, we've got the whole <laughs> thing sorted who else can we get who would be 
I've forgotten his name now. You know the guy with the bowler hat? Odd job. Odd job. Yeah. <laughs> Beast G. <laughs> Beast he looks G's. good in a bowler hat. <laughs> yeah. Love a wee bowler hat. But yeah. Fair enough. I feel like you can make a cast of nearly every show there is. Out of the whole mean, squad, like there's fifty two boys here. I mean there's probably a fairly decent sitcom. Yeah. In a lot a lot of you boys together. That's I'd what say. I mean. I'm not necessarily sure I'd want to be the one making that sitcom. I've seen Xander dress up as Shrek before. Ah, yes. I have seen I've that. seen him full body outfit, like <laughs> face painted. He's got the ears on as well. The Halloween nights out are usually good for Yeah, you can years. get some good inspiration there. I seem to remember Sheba going yeah, the hangover um, with the wee one. What was his name? He was the guy that had the... I don't know, was he... Who was Sheba again? Because his wife was the guy that's got the Mike Tyson yeah. tattoo. <laughs> oh, he was uh, Alan. He was Alan yes. and his kid was... Uh, oh, whatever the baby's name is. Yeah, was I actually don't remember. The hangover, but yeah. I remember Wilson went as the Adams family one year as well. Yeah, that was brilliant. The, the whole family that dressed up. What about yourself, Alex? Have you been on the, the Halloween nights out yet? Uh, she wasn't at the one last year, unfortunately. Nah. nah. What ca- what character would you back yourself to play? Movie character. Movie character. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, what would you uh, most want to play? What movie would you most want to be in? Uh, I don't know, man. Like the Hangover looks so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that kind of like everyone getting away. Are you just saying that because you want a holiday to Vegas? Yeah, that, see, that, <laughs> that sounds awesome, but... Holiday to Vegas for the boys. I don't know which one you'd go for. Uh, I'd love to send, like, four boys from here to Vegas, put a player cam on each one of them, <laughs> chop it back up, and then there you go, that's some content for Molly to make. <laughs> Sheer chaos. See if Al can get the budget for that. Yeah. Al Kellick, I mean, not you, Al. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, Al, if you also want to finance it, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, before we get Alan to any more shameless amounts of debt. Another one? Yep. Who is the teammate that makes you laugh the most? Yeah, nice one. Nice one. Uh, I'll go with Bino. I knew you were going to say that. that. Honestly, every day you come in, he gives you all kinds of stick, but uh, he is... uh, First guy popped in my head, I don't know. He's a safe answer in that regard, as yeah. we know, yeah, for sure. He loves the team culture. Loves it. Yeah. Um all for having a laugh. And he he's also all for having a laugh at himself as well. Like <laughs> key example today, watching back some review clips of the game at the weekend and uh, obviously Franco loves to see a bit of footwork before the carry and uh Bino just runs in a straight line and just stands <laughs> up and goes, Great carry, Bino. <laughs> And uh, everyone just has a little wee giggle, but um, I don't know if you could tell that was my Bino accent. Was that was it? Was yeah, I wasn't yeah, sure which one. Uh, were, I was, was laughing that, politely. Yeah, one, that like was you. my Bino impersonation. But, I wasn't um, sure if it was Yorkshire or you had a bit of Franco's <laughs> accent. I wasn't sure where we're going. I can't do a Franco accent. I'm probably not attempt it either. Probably but, um, not wise to try that either. Yeah, Bino's a great show. What about? Let's go to the other end of the spectrum. What younger boys make you laugh? Younger boys. Who do I want to get? Because you've got. There's a bit of a. I don't know how to put it. Like. The change rooms here, there's two main change yep. rooms, but they're not the biggest. So usually the younger guys all jump in a bigger change room just down from the two change rooms. Mm-hmm. So they've got their own little cave. It's a bubble, yeah. And I was in there for a few years. Yeah, I you progressed, are, didn't you? progressed out. You graduated. Uh, yeah, graduated. <laughs> um, just just I'll be the on. next one. See, when there's an exodus in the change room next, I'll be moving up. Yeah. Um, but surely you've got a couple of jokers in there, and I know you do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I want to give credit for this. It's where we find that Alex could put himself up for this. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually yeah. hilarious. I'll give it to Jack Mann, actually. Yeah, he's Jack's good fun. Uh, yeah, he's good. Far corner. Gregor, Gregor Brown's good as well, and I'll go Gus Fraser. Nice Those guys. Yeah, yeah, they're all good together. And then uh, guys my age. <laughs> Fez will give you something, but rarely. Like he, he comes out when he does come, he's, it's usually worth yeah, it. It's usually worth it. Eh? That's fair enough. Yeah. That's nice. Right, we'll go with one more, and then well, that's you. One out. One more out. Which coach are you calling if your car breaks down? Here we go. 
<laughs> speaking that? speaking that of that you? <laughs> speaking of Alex, how tall are you? Six nine. Six nine. With a man of that stature, you'd expect him to drive <laughs> I don't know. Something roomy. Yeah. How would you drive? Hyundai I ten. <laughs> Hyundai I nice. ten. Yeah, it's humble. It, it's like it's a metal it's like a metal ball and somebody's like blowing some air into it, it's just like a wee bubble. <laughs> Seeing Al get that every morning just looks like a struggle. I know, it's for the insurance, mate. That's what it's for. Yeah. Gotta keep the insurance. It's fair. Story that deserves I'm never entirely sure whether it's fully true or not. But uh Doddy Weir's first car was something similarly small and he had to take the front seat out and drive from the back seat. <laughs> so the follow up question is, is are, are you doing that? <laughs> no, I actually was you can like you can literally take the back seat out and like move everything back, back was it. And and move a seat down as well. But What's the most amount of folk you've managed to fit in your car? With you driving? One. Me dri- no, I, I have had me and all my mates from home in the car down in Newcastle. Can you fit somebody behind you? Like, it doesn't work, but <laughs> it, yes. it has worked at times. Like, when it when it has to work, people... I would I, not want to draw that short straw. Yeah. No, I'm kind of with you there. Uh, yeah. One of my mates said, he said to me, he was like, oh, no, nah, it's fine, mate. I'll, I'll manage, like, trust. I'll manage. Because I was... A couple of guys were going to get the train and then... You said you got there. to Newcastle? Yeah, and he got there and he was like, mate, you're, you're joking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no wonder. Uh, but uh, has your car ever broken down? Nah. Touch wood right not, now? Yeah, touch wood. But <laughs> yep. not so f- which coach would I call? I feel like... I think Mark should be the most practical about it. I think he, he's got... Yeah, yeah I can see that. But I don't know. Who'd you go for? Uh, Deco, Deco would be my Deco, yeah. That, that is he's good but he's got because well. he's got his van, he's got his wee farm. He does his little bits and bobs. He's a handyman. Yeah. I feel like he'd. I don't, know. I don't know what other coaches or mechanics, but then he could go to like Colin, Colin Yeah, that's a great. He, show. He'd, he'd surely know a bit about yeah. some machines. I um, reckon Shiz would be good as well. Shizzle Always. Dizzle, yeah. He just he's the answer for all things. Just all <laughs> things like the mix and match. Yeah. Yeah. He could do anything. Could believe that. But um yeah, Dick would be the answer. Pete Murch was actually the answer for the last time we got this question. Well, he was eventually, because I can't remember who it was, but the first person that the guest that had this question said Dodge. It, it might have been Darge, but his answer was Franco just so he could tell him he was gonna be late. Which <laughs> oh, is yeah. an outside the box way of answering that question. Yeah. But remember Darge picked Murch because he lives close by. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, who lives closest to you, Alex? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, on that note, we will call in to episode 24 of the Squadcast. Thank you very much to Alex Hamill for sticking around and joining us. Go well this weekend and in many other weekends to follow, and we'll see you again soon. Murphy, likewise, we'll see you again this time next week in the lead-up yep. to European semi-final week. Um, but in the Nuts. meantime, we will see you all on Saturday night here at Scottsdale Warrior Nation. Tickets still available at GlasgowWarriors.org. In the meantime, he's been Alex Samuel, he's been Murphy Walker, I've been Craig Wright, and this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast. Mm-hmm.